Welcome to the Bushy Black Brother Network. Welcome back to Car Wax, where we get back into our second half reviews of one of our favorite artists, Big K R I T, Big Crit. Big Crit. So you already know. I mean, back from the 2007. Um, Forever's a mighty long time. Mm-hmm. Fucking love that one. I just loved it. I was like, damn, this dude is creative. Fucking love the way he flows. Oh my god. So that came out, and then when you said, "Hey, Chris got it," oh, I gotta hear that. Crit is here, and we had this conversation about a week ago. I was like, "Yo, man, I'm just." Eh. Did you hear it? He, and you said, where did you hear it? I said, well, I was in the house. He said, nah, you got to hear it in the car. Right. You got to yep. hear it in the car. And I was like, really? He was like, nah, you got to hear it in the car. That's how he makes his, he, he intentionally makes his music for you to listen to it in the car. And you was absolutely right. Because <laughs> mm. I just kept playing it. And it, it, once it started off with Crit is here, that started the whole I mean because when I initially heard it I was kind of like yeah okay and then when I was in a car and I cut it on I was like wow <laughs> what a difference wow and I love the way he raps when I when I'm when when I'm talking about we we transitioned from um Maxo he is good he writes really well he he has different styles that he plays off. There's a little sing songy shit up in there. He does a lot of stuff on this album that's pretty damn good. And I, I'm telling you, when I first heard it at the house, I only got up to, I think, right before the cold. Yeah, I got up to Believe. and then Believe, I, yeah. I and love then that. I turned around and then I put it in the car and then I went straight through that bitch. And it was mm. 19. It was 19 fucking cuts. And guess what? 19 cuts, 56 minutes. Not a bad oh, that's average. Perfect. Not a bad average. Not a bad average. Um, it looks like he's averaging about three minutes a piece. Um, low three minutes at that, if you average it. Because he, he got a couple of skits in there. Um, once I heard the skits the first time, I didn't fucking want to hear them no more. So I was okay. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, he did some silly shit in there too. I really liked that. Um, like is like at the end of Mississippi. If you needed further proof of a lyrical massacre, it was undeniable. I told you it would be worth the wait. That's why I waited so long. Um, I have never heard such a display of magnificence in one record. It was amazing. It was none other than the biggest of crit mm. from the flatlands of Mississippi. Every minute worth waiting for. You could feel the spirits of the older blacks. No, which, oh my. Resonating God. through the music. It was magnificent. He, it was he magnificent. Was like, yeah. This is the most extraordinary. <laughs> I said, did you hear the horns? Or oh, were they horns? Or oh, were they a clarinet? Oh. I was like, that yeah. shit is fucking crazy. And, and he does little funny little things into that just to get you into a whole um, process of everything through. J. Cole shows up. You know, prove it. Hey, nice work, Cole. Not really his best. You got a dog up in this bitch, but nice one. You know what I mean? Not okay. when he's best, but Cole shows up, and, you know, I always like to hear him. But he showed up really well, and he did a lot of good stuff in here. But uh, before we get into the cuts, go ahead. What's your thought? All right, so, again, yeah, you're absolutely right, man. I popped it in, and I was like, and yeah, I, I popped it in in the car first. And I was like, oh, okay, this sounds different. This sounds different. You know, I was I was expecting this, but okay, this was a different approach. You know, what what made you what made you do this approach, Crit? Mm-hmm. You know, so I had to listen to it a couple times. I had to listen to it a few times. I listened to it in the house, and I was just like, Ugh, it doesn't, it's, actually, it sounds worse. 
Damn. I said, nah, man. I know it don't sound like this. I know it don't sound like this. So I, I put it back in the car again. And I was just like, wow. Okay, so he's he's transitioning from a underground country rapper to a southern conscious rapper. Like, you can just kind of feel he was doing less of the 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 in my trunk. I'm you know riding down the street. He usually does the my tweeters. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My twelve speakers uh, songs. You know, and this was more on the calm, positive side. So I was like, okay. And then another thing is he only produced one song on this whole whole album. Really? And he usually produces all of the song, all of yeah, that. Yeah, because track. that was the last one you told me, right? What's that? Um, the Forever's a Mighty Long Time. He yeah. Did, he did almost all of that, too, didn't he? Yep. He did almost all of that. And he did almost none of this one. Wow. So that was another difference that, you know, kind of caught me by surprise because it was like, all right, he, he sounds good, but these beats don't sound different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and, and so I, I, I really enjoyed the lyrics. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed how he was making the songs. I loved uh, the the track arrangement was 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 cool. Yeah, track arrangement was cool. You know, and con- considering I'm not, I'm still not even sure why he put the first track the first track. Because the first track should have been the last track, and the first track should have been the intro of him introducing the album, of Carlos and Chico Bean introducing the album. Like, the second song should have been the first song. The first song should have been the last song. Really? Yeah, man, because it, for me, that it didn't start until then. You know, like, you know, Crit is here, man. It, 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 it just started off, it started off slow for me. Okay. I like the song, but it didn't need to start off as the first song. Crit's here did not need to start off as the first song. Okay, I got you. You know, and then you went to the skit when the skit should have been first, and then I've been waiting should have been next. You know, but it, it was. But again, the music was still cool though. You know, the make it easy, it kind of slowed down on me. I was like, eh. Yeah, I didn't like that. You know? And the, but it was like, ah, all right. And then the, and then for me, the album started. When the Lil Wayne and the Sweetie came on, that Lil Wayne, Wayne verse was hard. That Lil Wayne verse had me like, okay, Wayne, I'm ready for your new shit again. Yep. Yep. <laughs> he's hanging out then, on a couple of features, but he's he, he's due for a new one. Mm-hmm. And then uh, energy, yeah. I energy, need energy, your energy. energy. But more than that, I really like the next track. I mean, with Rico Love, who sounds like nice. Drake on the, on the track. Yeah, that was a nice. That was really. It was produced nicely too, though. Mm-hmm. I think the production on that. And 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 it was like a Drake song, <laughs> but it was it was a nice move. Yeah, that was a really good one. That's why I was saying, man, this was a really nice balanced um, album that he did. Even though I think the arrangements could have been better. To your point. Yeah, they, they were fair. And, and and then after that, like I said, man, the, the album actually started. The I made with Yellow BB, that was cool, you know. And then it got into every time, and then believe. Nah, I thought what believe about was, I made it? I thought believe was. You didn't like I made it? Motherfucking made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherfucking yeah. made it. Yeah. Yellow BB did his thing on that. That 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 young rock. If I listen to his new album, we don't. You don't want it. Um, but that that was a good song. That was a really good song, dog. Mm-hmm. And like I said, and then every time, and then Believe, Believe came on, I was like, oh, this is fly. Because uh, it went straight into, you know, if you believe, prove it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and then it had Jake Cole on it. I thought that was awesome. The Family Matters was great. The the Blue Flames with the, with the, <laughs> the, with the Love Joy Georgia shit. reference. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was super cool. You yeah, know, Blue Flame Ballet, yeah, that yeah. was the song of the album for me. The Blue Flame you know. Ballet? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, that, that shit was, was cold. cold as hell. That shit was cold. Yeah, I did. I, I, loved it. I was like, man, 
Learn from Texas, that was pretty cool. Outer Space, it got me three listens to actually get into that. Because he was lyrically saying some shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I had to really appreciate him lyrically on that. And then um, High Beams and, and Life in the Sun, it, it was cool. It finished off very well. Mississippi, you could have left that off. But Mississippi was on there, so honestly, Mississippi was on there, so if the CD was on repeat, Crit's here. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. If the CD was on repeat, Crit's here should have been the last song. But instead, it's the first song, and then it goes into the intro. And it's like, eh, if you hear it on repeat, then mm-hmm. then I can deal with that track. Okay. But, because it but, seems like it's in the middle. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if, if it's not on repeat, it's like, eh, man, I don't want to <laughs> listen to it first. I don't mind listening to it later, but I don't want right. to listen to it first. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's too upbeat. And and the album is way mellow. It's that's mm-hmm. the most upbeat song on the album. But I think that's why it should have been first. Get it out of the way. You know what I mean? Just get it out of the way. And then he creates something outside of that. That's why I didn't mind it being up front. I think if you try to bring the energy up at the end, you had a mellow, nice, um, I don't want to say popish, but it was it was... I don't know the word for it, but he's he's using a style that's really almost contemporary, like everybody's doing. There's a lot of singing. There's some almost R&B tracks that he was either rapping or, or kind of harmonizing on, or whatever you want to call it. But there, the music was like that. It wasn't hip-hop music. It wasn't rap music. It was some really great freaking production that he played off in so many different ways mm-hmm. but he rapped off that bitch but yeah it's just it was a lot of good goddamn music on here man and i and, and it's so funny i'm still gonna pretty much thank you for that because i think if i would have kept trying to hear it at home i was i was gonna probably be like what is this you know as soon as i was in the car every time i got in the car i'll either put that one on or that ybn and I was kind of like, wow, these cool. And you're like, no, nah, we will need to do this with the Maxo. I'm like, now nah, let me start listening to the Maxo then. And then I put <laughs> that one up in that bitch. But um, yeah, man, this is very, very enjoyable, man. Very enjoyable for me. Um, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm just a fan of this kid. And he showed up again. I'm just glad he showed up again. Because, you know, sometimes... Um, people try to do something different and then they fall off and then you got to wait again. Right. This was a great return album to say, look, I'm doing something a little different, but um, I'm giving it to you. Um, you did a fucking hell of a job on it. Yeah, I, I definitely, this definitely showed some solid growth as an artist. You know, I, 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 sh- I can see a lot of maturity in these, in these, in these bars that he was putting together, man. You know, and even before this, he he had an interview. He interviewed his dad. Mm. You know, he he got a video of him just kind of talking about certain things that happened in his life. And, you know, just kind of enjoying a conversation with his dad on footage. You know, them filming it. Okay. You no, know, okay. so that was a real good thing. And and again, man, those are those are things that we don't actually see all the time. And and you know, that was something he felt like needed to be done. And I thought that was awesome. So. You know, again, it shows a lot of solid. He showed a lot of solid growth, um, and then, like I said, I thought the the production was creative. Mm-hmm. You know, the production was very creative because it didn't sound like nothing he's used to actually putting together. It does, but it doesn't. It really doesn't. Yeah. And then the features were very decent, man. Very good features, man. Complimented the whole album. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it 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 didn't didn't overshadow him. You know, because of how good he really is. You yeah. know, and and then yeah. Uh, like I said, Dwayne, Dwayne was really good. You know, the Rico Love on the hook, man, that was beautiful. With obvious, mm-hmm. you know, the and yellow, then Yellow, yellow Beezy, you know, he was showing a young rapper love on that. And then J Cole. Now I enjoyed J Cole's verse. Let me go to that because okay. you said that it was just okay. Yeah, J Cole be killing dog. He didn't kill this one. And listen, man, the first thing J Cole did was show love to the big crit. Mm-hmm. Man, 
First off, super love to you. I've been showing you love since my homeboy put me on to you, and I put him on the uh, K dot. I was like, okay, cool. Second thing he did was he said, I was I, I want to go, but you know, I doubt that people aren't gonna like my flow. But what what kind of bitch ass fear is that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I should just go hard and not even give a fuck about what you know. I mean, what people care about. Then that was his second. That was the second point. Then his last point was him giving a shout out to his first fan. And I was like, well, Yeah, the me. one that was traveling was like, and she worked for Delta. Right, yeah. right, right. So just not just the story at the end, but how he showed appreciation, he showed his flaw, and then he gave thanks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Again, I thought the sequence of how he put that verse together was like brilliant. Okay. You know, but the verse the, and the verse and putting the stories all together, man, oh man, that shit is masterpiece. That was a masterpiece to me. Okay. For for on some writing shit because he was able to give you three stories. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they flowed and, easily together. Smooth. Yeah. Like like it was supposed to go together to yeah. the point where you was like, yeah, it was okay. No, nigga, that was a great ass story. Did you miss it? Whoa, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, no disrespect to you or nothing, but it was just like, I wow. I just got the way you put it together was like, man, you, that shit was natural. That shit mm-hmm. was really natural. So, yeah, man, that that I, I like that verse. I really like that verse. I thought that shit was fucking well written. Yeah, Very well written. I need, to, I well need to break it down to your point, you know, because I heard it. You know, that's that's why I picked up on that. I was like, "Wow, you talking about a chick that he's a man? I need to see you at my next concert." You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize, it, like, what how he was saying it. Like, I didn't know if he was stalking me or what the hell was going on. Then I realized <laughs> that you fucking work for Delta and you was getting free rides and shit. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." I, I I I love the way he rap. I guess you know, coming from the Dreamville album and how he was fucking just killing it. Uh, mm-hmm probably wanted that as opposed to him showing up doing his thing you know what i mean and, right um and if I, I i think if i would have dropped back and said listen to it then i would have been like wow that was fucking clever it was three different ones because yeah this was one of them royce to five nine vo- verses mm-hmm. from book of mm-hmm. ryan you know that that definitely gave me that feel thank you of that verse thank you for saying that that what was on my mind when we was talking about it, and i'm not gonna leave that that's what I was talking about when I was talking about um, Max O'Cream. Royce the Five Nine had you emotionally attached to his shit. Oh yes, but almost his story was almost similar. But I didn't get the feel. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. When you have something like that and it's hard like that, that wasn't clever. That was just emotional. But he wrapped it so well and with the story in-betweens and all of that it it created something that was amazing as opposed to this guy just rapping his story i'm right royce the five nine that's who i was fucking yeah that's what i was thinking about sorry about that <laughs> no that's not good but yeah man I, I i crit crit is an interesting individual man interesting rapper man because he it's like he battles himself and this was a little more of him clearing his conscience of, of not fighting to compete. Right. right. This wasn't him competing. It was this was him just getting it out. Yeah. This was open. He was kind of right. like, this is some shit that's just open to me. Let me just, let me do something like this and let me do something like this. And if he didn't produce it, maybe that's where his freedom came from. You know what I mean? Also where his freedom came from is this was his first independent project really he finally dropped this independent yeah he he left he left probably about a year and a half ago maybe two years ago he left Def Jam. okay you know what i'm saying so it took him a lot of time to drop this but more or less this was his baby and he got to do what he wanted to do and you could tell this was what he wanted to do because like you said it it sounded freak it had direction, but it was it kind of lingered sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it. it was raw. It was a really raw album, you know. And it but was it was. But don't you, you can you, tell it was refreshing for him. Yes, but it was refreshing for me because he came out with this 
amongst a lot of stuff we've been hearing throughout the year. And this was refreshing to me. And I like the dude because he can he can fucking throw some lyrics out there. And he does it in so many different ways. It just depends on how he wants to rap. And it's, it is, mm-hmm. I just love how he can do it and he does it well. You know, like some rappers will try a, a difference. They'd be like, damn, man, why are you doing that crazy shit? He's trying to sound like blam. Or he's trying to do like blam. He's like, nah, this is what I do. I've done it before. So if you listen to my old shit, I've done this right. before. Yeah, he can this rap. Is, this he is nothing rap, new rap. for me. This is nothing new. And, you know, I just enjoyed the shit out of this. I was so glad to hear it. And it wasn't kind of like, ah, oh, you know what? If he would have just cut out about four. No, no. He did with these 19 tracks, but would it be in 56 minutes? This was okay. He did a really good job to keep you interested. And he did the, the skits wasn't overwhelming either. So he did a lot of good stuff on it. And and with that said, I'm having this at an 8.5. 8.5. Goodness yep. gracious. Yep. Yeah. You know, I wanted to give it that high. I was really that interested in giving it that high. But it didn't hit the mark for me 100%. What? You know, like I said, man, the the, the crits here was a cool song, man. If he would have just left that as a bonus track, I would have been so happy. I would have been like, okay, he started off with the comedian. He got into it. Okay, it was a rough start, but I can deal with that. You know, I, mm, mm, critically, I, I'm, I'm having to give him a little flaw on that. I actually wanted to give him like a very high seven, man, but he doesn't deserve less than an eight. He gets a solid eight for this, man. Okay. Okay. I respect that. I enjoyed it. That's why um couldn't really go too much higher. Um because I think there's just better shit production wise. I love this production because it was cool. It was nice and it flowed with what he wanted to do. Right. You know what I mean? And you know, I'll just flip back to um um the previous ones that we done and and you, you you got great producers you know what i mean the freddie gibbs and them and mad lib and that was just amazing you had the best of both worlds just fucking flowing out that but you got this guy who's pretty amazing with some really good music that came behind him with a, a really good artist that can fucking rap his ass off and do a lot of other different things. So, but I don't. I, I I can't hate you on the eight. I just enjoyed it more. That's why you know I had an eight five, and which average is about an eight two five. Mm hmm. That's you know that's pretty cool. Yeah, man, that was good, and that was that was a pretty decent album. Like I said, man, uh, my personal playback value, even though it was definitely quality, I thought the bars were quality. No, I just. I personally feel like he dumbed down his flow a little bit. Mm. You know, I personally feel like mm, maybe he's just in a better place in life. You know? And even though you're in a better... You know, for me, Jay-Z's in a better place in life, but he still could give you some bars, some bar bars. Right. right. You know, this was kind of like talking to the youngins, like, you know, he was he was like, you know, go to church. You know what I'm saying? I'm still rapping about go to church. You know, I'm still trying to give give you them them positive inspirational words which was cool yeah but i still feel like he could have put a little spice into it man it wasn't enough spice for me you know but it was it was still big crit he still gave you those bars it it still was like okay you know i'm gonna give you what you want so he did give me what i wanted it just was still ah kind of yeah yeah you know did we did we have we talked about the Nas yet Mm mm-mm no, we supposed to have done. See, you said you wanted to do the Nas with. Actually, you wanted to do the Nas with Crit, but then you put in the Maxo. So we kind of like. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So you kind of moved Nas on, and I'm halfway through Nas, though. Nas, you got to listen to. Yes, sir. You got to listen to it. Because, again, 
you know, a lot of times with 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 Nas, he gets all different kinds of fucking production that doesn't complement how how good he is. That's what always pissed me off with um, Nas because he's always been talented enough, but he just didn't get a lot of music that really played into his progression. And I think he just but he to- got Kanye, and look what happened. Well, I, I sort of liked a little of that, but he that was a comeback, though. Because remember, the quality of how he rapped on there wasn't as clean either, though. Mm-hmm. We already talked about that. You know, there were some flaws in, in how he he was rapping on a couple of those cuts, too. So, I don't know. These are lost tapes. So, allegedly, with these lost tapes, there was some Kanye production um, on this one, too. Because it was a combination of all of that together. So yeah. that's why I, I, I wanted to s- really sit down and listen to all of it as well as see what he's rapping about. Then I can probably tell which one was the oldest ones and which one it was a kind of new to. Because you can you can tell sometimes how he's rapping and how what he's rapping about, what era and time that he was in. Right. Yeah, You and you definitely can. But that's the cool... And who. The other part is for me, I still enjoyed it. Like like they were new out new tracks. Yo, you always appreciate anything that Nas do though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the crazy part. It's like it's like, man, this is this is good. No, no, no. This is good, man. Hey, hey, give me a give me a glass of wine and then and light an incense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm playing some Nas. I'm playing some Nas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm playing some Nas, you know. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So that's what's up, though, man. Um, yeah, but I, I, I like this dude. You was c- critical on his ass last time too, dude. Why are you gonna like the dude and still criticize him like this? Who you talking about, Crit? Yeah. Man, I, I don't know, man. I guess my expectations. He, he's he's kind of in the Wale lane for me. Ooh. You know how I feel like about Wale. Wale. <laughs> I see you don't like Wale. That's why you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. I like Wale. His, you know what? If you go back and listen to his first album, I think you never listened to his first album. If you go back and listen to his first album, I believe that you'll see why I like him. That's fine, but that doesn't mean I like him now, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I can look at a lot of first people albums and say, "Wow, that nigga used to be balling," and you'd be like, "What happened? <laughs> the fuck just happened?" You know. So yeah, man, but. Yeah, I, 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 for me, I think he just hasn't tapped into his true, true greatness, now, you know. And I think he's still striving and looking for that. Or you know, or like you normally do is you need to find him somebody, a good producer to say, "Look, this is what we're gonna do for you. This is what we're gonna do. Let's go." Don't try to. I know you, 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 you in the industry. You've known. You've done your thing. But uh, he need to probably step back and let a producer say, this is what we're going to do. Because what you've been doing is not working really well for you. Um, um, let me throw some Knife Wonder shit on you. Or, or... Man, nah, it ain't the production. You know what it is? What is it? It's the same thing that Cole was having problems with that I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man, I, I, I see it. Which is? Cole brought over a hundred folks in to be on a Dreamville Records album with him. Man. This is the difference between Crit and Cole. Crit don't have a crew around him that's gonna motivate him like like that. So he can't just make a few phone calls and say, Yeah, let's all go to the studio and be there for a week. Right. right. You know, and, and or he could. <laughs> You know, but he's too much of an introvert to, you know, go with that range. Nah, man. Crit you, you, has that ability. You flip from Crit, Crit to needs- Wale, though. We was talking about Wale and what he needed. Wale? Wale is cold. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vouch for Wale's ability. Damn. Wale is cold. He's just a little too cold for his own good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sure why he doesn't rap with a lot of rappers. So why did they drop him? From his label and shit. Everybody get dropped from labels, man. Yeah, it's not know, about but, I'm not talking but, about. But he's been coming out with some trash and he got dropped. So that's the difference. P- 
people do some good shit and get dropped. But you coming out with trash and you get dropped, that's almost like some deserving. Some people didn't transition well to the streaming era. So they have to approach it different ways. When you when this transition came, certain rappers like Drake just easily transitioned over. You know, like Future. You know, so while they wasn't one of those successful ones, you know, you look at you look at Eminem, you look at Rick Ross, you look at Nicki Minaj. They're they good, but th- again, they're just getting the hang of this streaming era mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So with Wale, it's like with certain rappers, it's like, do I still want to do it with this era? I'm not even getting paid. So now you're battling how much do I love it? You right. know, because at first I was doing it for the industry. At first I was doing it for the record label. And I'm not, I don't love it to do it for the record label. I'm loving it to do it when I want to do it, when I'm ready to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now with him being independent and doing it when he's ready, the music is going to sound better. The music should sound better. Should. And the music has been sounding better. Really? Yes. And he's only putting like little singles out here and there. Okay. Not, he, or four here, two here, one here. You know, so it's like, oh, okay, that was cool, Wale. Okay. Then you'll forget about it, and then he'll drop like two more. Oh, all right, Wale. And then you'll go back and listen to the last one. Like, oh. Mm, okay. And see, and he knows, and you know, that you don't want to hear a bunch of damn Wale. <laughs> That's so correct. So let me just drop it. See what y'all think about this. See how it bites. You know, see if I can get this J. Cole bite. Oh, nope, I didn't get the J. Cole or whatever bite that I wanted. And that's his. See, he's battling himself. Wale has a problem with himself because he wants, he sees something and he wants to be that. And he wants to get what everyone else gets. But that's not him. Yeah, because he's not that as good as a lot of the people that's out here doing their thing. Who transition, like you said. They transition and say, look, man, we're going to cut this down to two minutes because I need to get that them streams in. Oh, I'm going to do two and a half or I'm going to do an album with about 15 cuts or I'm going to do an EP with nine cuts. But I'm going to get the airplay. I'm going to get it on and my shit going to get played and played and played and played. Or I'm going to hook my friends and we're going to get together and have some great fucking features. Well, yeah, man, I, I believe that, you know, with time, man, everybody going to figure it out, man. J. Cole is a, is the front runner. We we all try to compare everybody to Cole, you know, and compare everybody to Kendrick. You know, we, man, look, I just, it's hard, man. It's hard out here, man. It's not easy. This rap game ain't easy, man. We can't just, I give people benefits of the doubt because I've rapped before and I've tried to go through the the what is it the the what was you know when you're a comedian and you go through the I can't even remember what it's called but you know I've tried to run through this little hip-hop game thing man that's not tough you got to connect with the right people mm-hmm. you know you just got to be very charismatic and you got to be honestly you got to be chosen you got to be chosen to be able to do it yep and it didn't work out for me, but I was a good artist. So it don't it really. Sometimes it don't even matter how good of an artist you are. It's, it's how you how you're open to learn and who you know, you know, and how how fast you're able to develop. Per- perfect example, i.e., uh, Twenty One Savage. Right. You know, so you know, I, I look at the game completely different, man. I always I, I always take things into consideration. Because me, I can rap better than half of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Right. But taking into consideration, sorry, dude, you just don't know the right people. You dark skinned. You didn't put in enough work. Uh, whatever, 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 whatever. Okay, that's cool. I'll take that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna hate the next person just because you know I'm I'm I, I, I'm a Libra, man. I have balance, man. I always take things into consideration, man. I care. I guess you know. Sue me. <laughs> I got you, dude. Skullwax. See us every Sunday. Every Sunday for our music reviews. Check us out. Every podcast download. You're hanging out on YouTube. 
go to Bougie Black Brother Network and we got a playlist of Car Wax. If not, it's probably a part of the newest stuff anyway. So just check us out and we'll go from there. And if you follow us on Bougie Black Bro on Instagram as well as Twitter and Facebook, all three. And Sean, where they get you at? Make sure y'all hit me up on IG, man, on Bougie Brother Sean. That's Bougie Brother Sean. And then make sure y'all catch me on WDB as Hip Hop, also on IG. That's for my show. With that being said, you can click on the link in the bio, IWDBS Hip Hop, and that will actually get you where you can watch the shows on YouTube. So make sure y'all go check that out. Also, I was thinking in the back of my head, I think the Nas and the Cardé would be perfect together. Nah, we're doing Cardé and Chance the Rapper. And Chance? That's right. I haven't even listened to it yet, man. Mixed reviews totally. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. So I got you. You made me listen to the back show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Just check it out, man. I, I, I got some opinions on that, and I, I just wanted to run it past you. Um, and listening to them, too, um, will probably get you into how I was thinking. Because I started with the YBN, and um, that was cool. And then when I put that on behind it, because there was so many of these features that's not even listed, and you'd be like, whoa, what the fuck? The mm-hmm. baby going in, he's fucking killing it again. I'm like, damn. <laughs> the baby needs to come out with something new on his own again. That dude is just fucking, he's fire. On fire this, this year? Yeah, he's he's fired. That dude's fire. So, but uh, yeah, dude. Okay. Well, the homie, uh, the homie E Forty just dropped another album. It was is actually a pretty good album. It's called Practice Makes Paper. Uh, got a, got some pretty decent features on there too, man. Fabulous is actually on there. Method Man and Red Man's on there too. Damn. So, um, that's one of the ones. If you're a real good hip hop head, check that out. BJ the C- PJ the C- Chicago Kid dropped his R and B cuts. Um, it's called Eleven Twenty Three pretty good album definitely a pretty good album i enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it so you know there's a few things that's out there right now if y'all got some time to check it out man please do excellent so we appreciate you stopping by and we'll see you next week on wax later peace